Welcome to a web series about something, Season 3. Today we discuss Seinfeld's 18th episode, The Note. The Note sets out to ask a tough question that was on the mind of many New Yorkers. How did Joe DiMaggio eat a donut? Was he still Jolton Joe, or more of a Duncan DiMaggio? Well, kind of, but I... You'll notice that there's no bicycle anymore in the hallway. Did Jerry sell it because he stopped riding it? Wait, did he ever ride it? Knowing Jerry, it was probably a New Year's resolution that he gave up on. Come to think of it, it makes more sense not being there. Not only is this episode the first to feature a new logo, but it's also the only one to feature a new theme song. Hey, is it a Turns out, the folks at Castle Rock and NBC were unimpressed. As said Jonathan Wolf. There's only one episode that actually has that music element in it that slipped through because we forgot to ask permission. We also witness George's infamous double dipping when he does so out of a jar he grabs from Jerry's fridge. This habit of George's will be front and center in episode 59, The Implant, and the world will cite it every time they see someone double dip from here on out. George also discusses his distaste for urinals, telling Jerry that he's a stall man. But just two episodes later, he proclaims that urinals are just more fun. He probably gave up on being a stall man once he realized they were never going to build the stall doors that reached the ground, an idea he champions in episode 112, The Postponement. George's quirks illustrate just how Jerry Seinfeld saw the show. It's about problems and situations that have no precedent. That's where the show lies, in the small, undiscussed dilemmas. When George and Jerry meet with Roy to get their titular notes, they discuss the boxer of Vander Holyfield, who was famous for getting his ear bitten off by Mike Tyson. Thankfully, unlike George, Tyson didn't double dip. This wouldn't be the first time George becomes obsessed over a boxer. In episode 108, The Diplomats Club, he even proclaims that his boss looks like Sugar Ray Leonard. Speaking of boxing, Larry David found himself going a few rounds with the censors. I'm having these erotic conversations with the censors on the telephone, and I'm beginning to have sexual fantasies about the censor, whom I'm conversing with every week about this kind of material. In the end, he must have thrown in the towel, resulting in us getting George's hilarious line. I think it moved. In Jerry's apartment, Kramer can be heard singing the song Jolton Joe DiMaggio, which also plays during the end credits. DiMaggio, who spent his entire baseball career with the Yankees, holds a 56-game hitting streak record, which still stands today. Ooh, fun fact. Former Yankee shortstop Derek Jeter has the third longest hit streak in the team's history, behind Joe Gordon and DiMaggio. And who taught Jeter how to perfect this sweet swing? A certain Mr. Costanza, in episode 143, The Abstinence. Terry Hanauer does a great job as Juliana the masseuse. You may have seen her in Beauty and the Beast, L.A. Law, Beverly Hills 90210, E.R., and Six Feet Under. She began directing in 2008 and quit acting in 2010. Deborah Jo Rupp unsuccessfully auditioned for the role of Juliana in this episode, but we'll see her later as Katie in episode 108, The Diplomats Club, and 143, The Abstinence. Ooh, and the little guy who runs from Jerry to avoid being abducted? Turns out he was played by Jerry's real-life nephew. The gang's DiMaggio sighting marks Kramer's first appearance at Monk's Cafe. In that scene, you'll note that when Jerry asks Kramer, did he say anything? His left hand is empty, but in the next shot, he's holding a blue container. And if you look closely, you can see Julia breaking character looking directly at the camera, when Michael bangs on the table to get the attention of the Yankee Clipper. Next episode, The Truth. <laughs>